Pastor Mitzi, and I'm here to wish you a Merry Christmas and to read you some of my family's favorite Christmas stories. That's one of the things that we always do as we wait for Christmas morning after we've gone to church, we come home and we read some stories, and I wanted to share some of these with you. We'll read three stories tonight. One is Mortimer's Christmas Manger, and this one's by Karma Wilson and Jane Chapman. Then we're going to read one of hopefully your favorites too, The Night Before Christmas. And then finally, we'll end with the Christmas story, and I'm reading the Christmas story from the Reader's Digest Bible for Children. So I hope you enjoy these stories as much as my children have enjoyed them over the years here at my house. The first story is Mortimer's Christmas Manger. And I wonder if you have a manger scene in your house. Have you ever thought about what it would be like to be so little that you could climb into that manger scene with baby Jesus and Mary and Joseph? That's what we're going to get to see Mortimer do in our book tonight. Let's get started. In a big house lived a wee mouse named Mortimer. He dwelled in a dark hole under the stairs. Nobody ever noticed little Mortimer, and Mortimer liked it that way. But he didn't like his hole. Too cold. Too creepy, squeaked Mortimer. Each day he snuck out and crept about looking for crumbs and tidbits. One day, Mortimer spied something new. What he spied was wonderful. He saw a huge tree covered with twinkling lights. Nestled on top was a bright, shining star. But something even better than the tree itself sat next to it on a table. Mortimer sighed with delight. A house just my size. But the house was so high and Mortimer was so low. I'll climb up the tree, said Mortimer. It made a perfect ladder for a mouse. Up, 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 Mortimer climbed. Down, down, down. The ornaments all crashed. Finally, he reached the table. Perfect, said Mortimer. Not cold, not cramped, not creepy. Cozy, but who are you? Mortimer had never met people so small, almost as small as himself. He had never seen such strange animals either. Tap, tap, tap. Mortimer knocked, but no one answered. When he reached the smallest statue, he saw... It was a baby in a wooden bed, just Mortimer's size. There's no room for you here, Mortimer said. Out you go. You see Mortimer pushing that cute little baby out of the nest. There's Mortimer. Into the bed crawled Mortimer, and he fell fast asleep in the soft, warm hay. The next day, as Mortimer crept about, he found good things to eat. Cookie crumbs, fruitcake morsels, and spicy peppermint candy. But when Mortimer scampered back up to his new home, the statues were all set up again. No, 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 squeaked Mortimer. This won't do. There's no room for me. He's getting mad, isn't he? In 
And so, Mortimer lugged and Mortimer tugged until all the statues were out. And stay out, he said. Then into bed crawled Mortimer and he fell fast asleep in the soft, warm hay. Mortimer set out and saw the big people gathered around the tree. He couldn't go out there, so he hid among the statues. A man started talking. Mortimer listened, and what he heard was wonderful. Since it is Christmas Eve, I shall tell the Christmas story, said the man. A long time ago, in a little town called Bethlehem, Mortimer heard about people named Joseph and Mary and a bright shining star. He heard about shepherds watching their flocks by night and traveling wise men. And the man continued, and there was no room for them at the inn. Then Mortimer heard about a baby, a baby who was born in a stable and had no real bed, but slept in a wooden manger, a baby born to save the world. And his name shall be called Jesus, said the man. And Mortimer looked at the bright shining star on the tree. He looked at his new home and his new bed. He looked at the statues. Last of all, he looked at the baby. I see, sighed Mortimer, you aren't just any statue, you are a statue of Jesus. Mortimer snuffed and he snuffled, and a tear rolled down his furry little cheek. There was no room for you in the inn, but I know where there is room, he said, and so... Let's see what Mortimer does as he thinks about the little baby. Mortimer lugged and Mortimer tugged and soon he dragged all the spat statues back to where they belong. Last of all, he laid the baby in the manger. This belongs to you, he said. Mortimer smiled. You look warm and cozy now. There was no place for Mortimer to go except back to the cold, cramped, creepy hole. As Mortimer scuttled down the tree, he said a prayer. Jesus, you were born to save the world. Perhaps you could bring me a home. And then Mortimer spied something new. And what he spied was wonderful. And Mortimer sighed with delight. A house! just my size. There were no statues in sight, and so Mortimer moved right in. Thank you, Jesus, said Mortimer. You've made room for me, too. And so Jesus has his home in the manger, and Mortimer he has his little home right there in his new house. I hope you enjoyed Mortimer's Christmas manger. I love that Mortimer found a new house just for him. How wonderful to have a house with gumdrops and icing and sugar cookies and to be able to leave another special house just for Jesus. Our second story tonight is the night before Christmas and the version that I am reading to you is illustrated by Mary Englebright. So let's read this story about Santa coming to our house. Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse, and the stockings were hung by the chim chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads and Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled down 
for a long winter's nap. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer. With a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donder and Blitzen, to the top of the porch, to the top of the wall, now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the housetop the coursers they flew with the sleigh full of toys, and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around down the chimney, St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed all in fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler, just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled, his dimples, how merry, his cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings, then turned with a jerk. And laying his finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. And that was the night before Christmas. And now finally I have the most special Christmas story of all. And it's the one from the Holy Bible. And it's the whole reason that we have Christmas to begin with. So let's read the story about the angel Gabriel coming to see Mary and finding and Mary finding out that she has a very special gift in store for her and in store for the whole world. This one comes from the Bible for children. Let's begin. In the fullness of time, God sent the angel Gabriel to Mary, a young woman living in the town of Nazareth in Galilee. She was engaged to Joseph, a descendant of King David. 
the angel Gabriel came to her and said, Greetings, Mary, full of grace, for God will be with you. Upon hearing these words, Mary was troubled. But the angel said, Do not fear. You shall bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus, and he shall be king, and he shall reign forever and ever. Mary replied, But how can this be, since I am not married? And the angel said, The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, and the power of God shall cover you with its shadow. And so your child shall be called the Son of God. Mary then said, I shall trust in the Lord. May it happen just as you have said. About that time, Augustus, the emperor of Rome, commanded that a count be made of all the people of his empire. Each man was to go back to his hometown to register his family. So Joseph went to Bethlehem in Judea with Mary, his wife, who was big with child. And there in Bethlehem, Mary gave birth to her baby. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because the inn had no room for them. And there were shepherds nearby, keeping watch over their flocks by night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the light of God shone around them. The angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid. I bring you great news of great joy for all people, for a Savior is born to you this day in Bethlehem, the city of David. He is Christ, the Messiah, the Lord. This is how you will know him. He is a newborn baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. All at once, angels' voices filled the sky, saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth through God's love. The shepherds said to each other, Let us go quickly to Bethlehem to see all that has happened. And there, they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Afterward, they returned, praising God, and they told everyone what they had seen. And all who heard them were filled with wonder. And that's what we're celebrating on Christmas Eve, the birth of the baby. May we all be filled with wonder. I wish you blessings on Christmas with your family. I hope that you will give a gift to your family, maybe a drawing, maybe something you have made, a little birthday gift, just as if you were giving it to Jesus. Let's pray together as we close our story time. Lord, we are thankful for, for those who give out of the goodness of their hearts, for Mortimer, who gave up his little nesting spot so that there would be room for the baby Jesus. We give thanks for the joy of Christmas, the joy of Christmas morning when we unwrap the gifts that are under the tree. We give thanks for the joy of Jesus, who came as a little baby and who is with us still even on this night as his spirit rests with us, bringing peace, bringing goodwill, and bringing love to all his people. We pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Merry Christmas.